Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. So I just wanted to create a little mini tutorial here because in the back end of the previous tutorial, I was looking at some of the packages that are available to support Django internationalization and localization. In the last tutorial, I presented this website, djangopackages.org, and we were looking at the packages that are available for internationalization. So in this tutorial, I just wanted to take you through the Django Rosetta, which is going to be a useful program that's going to help us uh, create the translations. So let's go in and there'll be a link here to the PyPy package. And from here, we're just going to need to pip install Django Rosetta. So here in the code, I'm just starting where I finished in the previous tutorial. So go ahead and download that if you need to install or create the virtual environment and so on. So let's go ahead now and pip install the Django Rosetta. So there aren't any direct instructions here once we've installed, but we do have online documentation. So let's just take a look here. So we've got the install. Um, so pip install and we then need to add it to the installed apps. So just head over to the core and settings, of course. And we'll just add that in. I don't think there's any requirements for in respect to where it needs to be in the list. Okay, and as you can see here, we need to add a new URL. Um, so let's go in and do that. So we'll add this into our core URLs. Um, so we're adding our ePath. And if you're not if you're not familiar. Yep, so if you're not familiar with regular expression paths, uh, just head over to the site and I have made a, a small introduction uh, to help you out there. So if you just search for Learn Django intro to RE path regular expressions, that would take you to this. It's only about 20 minutes long. I'll just take you through um, how to read regular expression paths, okay, and how to build them. So by all means, have a look at that. So back here then we need to add that and then we need to add our path. So let's just have a look at what we need to put in there. Okay, so we've got this if statement. So let's just bring that in. Okay, so let's just uh, start this up. Okay, so we've not defined settings. If uh, In settings, installed apps. Okay, so let's just bring in settings. So that's going to be from Django dot oh, Django dot com. Import settings. Okay, so now that is okay. So if you're not too sure what's happened there, you can see that we've used then the plus equals. So we're just adding this to the URL patterns, the main URL patterns. Um, we're using the relative path here. Um, have a look at and check out the website for that. Essentially what we've done is we've installed the app, uh, the package, uh, sorry, and now we're just including the URLs for it. So now we should be able to access the software. Okay, so from our homepage, let's just add in the URL. Of course, we can add our own URL if we wanted to. Um, no such table, uh, Django session. So we're going to need to, if you haven't already migrated, Okay, so let's uh, let's just uh, make migrations. Okay, so there's anything we needed to do there. Um, Lang isn't unique. Okay, so let's just go back here, namespace. Let's uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we've got two includes. That's what the problem is here. We're including twice there for some bizarre reason. Okay, right. So let's go back into our okay, code refresh. And now we should have, um, okay, so we're going to need to potentially log in, it looks like. Now we don't have a login. So let's go in and add the login. I do apologize. Uh, create super user. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so let's try it now. Here we go. Okay, so now we've uh, signed in, we've now accessed via a Rosetta URL. And like I said, we could change that path if we wanted to. Um, we now have English and French. So if you remember from the previous tutorial, we set up English and French as the two languages. So Rosetta is providing us a, a user interface which is generated from the PO files that we've generated. If we go into one of these files, it's going to provide us a nice little interface here where we can then provide the translations. So really this is just a user interface for our PO file. So whereas before we go into the PO file and we manually create those edits, here we've just got a user interface from that file. So we can easily now go ahead and make our translations. So it looks like it's providing us some statistics also um, potentially here if we set this up properly. Um, but it's quite a handy little tool to help us uh, in a nice kind of interface set up all of our translations. So if you search further, of course, up the top here, we've got a, a nice filter. I guess this is one of the benefits. I can filter out untranslated uh, so I can find out what hasn't been translated. And of course, then I can find out what has been translated. So something you might have a question about is fuzzy only or fuzzy translations. And there's not too much documentation about this, but essentially what is here is that um, we may have in our application set something to be translated and it's not exactly 100% clear or we're not too sure whether the system's not too sure whether that's the right translation or not. So it just flags it as uh, fuzzy. So here I've got uh, a string and maybe some sort of input. So it's suggesting that's kind of, it's not too sure whether that's correct. So it's a fuzzy translation. So what we can do here um, is it will be flagged as fuzz, fuzzy potentially. It won't show uh, until we kind of deselected it's okay. So we can basically things are selected as fuzzy and then we can select whether um, it is correct or not. So is it fuzzy or not? Uh, is it not quite right? So that way we can then save and now we don't have any fuzzy. We're just confirming that that's an okay translation essentially. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Um, a, a nice little tool just to help you manage your translations.